For some, tennis is just a sport. But to others, it's a metaphor for life. Nobody understands this better than Roger Crawford. When I was born, uh, certainly my parents were, were really devastated by the news of the fact that their firstborn son had a physical challenge. In fact, the doctors told them that they didn't believe I'd be able to walk and I would have great difficulty actually taking care of myself on a day-to-day -day basis. The medical term is called ectrodactyly. It basically affects me from the elbows down and from the knees down. But, you know, really having three fingers, I, I've just gotten so used to it that I just do everyday tasks in my own unique way. My parents' attitude from the very beginning was no excuses. In fact, I can remember my father telling me over and over again, you don't live in Pity City. Take your hands out of your pockets, put a smile on your face, be proud of who you are. They helped me understand at a young age that it was my choice whether I was going to be disabled. It, it was my choice if I was going to, to feel sorry for myself. I became interested in a lot of different kinds of sports. I didn't want to be, you know, that person that had a, a disability. You know, I, I wanted to be like everybody else. Tennis changed my life. That's not an overstatement. At 12, 13 years of age, I was a pretty shy kid, and tennis was a sport I could play by myself. Backboard became like my best friend. He was there about four or five hours every day by himself. And one day, he was getting a drink out of the fountain, and about five or six kids showed up. They asked him, what happened to your hands? Where's your leg? And instantly, Roger just jumped right in, and he said, oh, it was terrible. We were on a boat, my dad and I, and it tipped over, and the alligator got me. And I said, this kid's remarkable. He said, hey, I think it's great that you're playing tennis, and if I can ever help you, you know, I'm always available. And I was like, wow. When I was teaching him, it was very difficult in the beginning. How was I going to hold on to the racket? People often ask me, Roger, how do you hold on to the tennis racket? Well, I've carved out a space in this piece of wood that allows me to place my right finger in between that space, which holds it secure. So on my forehand, for example, I hold the racket against my right elbow with my left hand. I change the racket face by rolling the grip against my right elbow. So if I'm hitting my forehand or my backhand, same thing. Tony just spent hours with me, and, and you know, he never said that something wasn't possible. I said, you get that ball over the net one more time than the next guy, you win. <laughs> Every available hour I had in the day, I was playing tennis. I lived and breathed the game. The small successes in tennis and the big successes developed his confidence. And that kept me going. That was the stimulus I needed. Yeah, you know, he was a human backboard. He really was. And Roger's win-loss record in four years of high school of varsity tennis was 46 wins and seven losses. After high school, Roger attended Loyola Marymount University where the NCAA eventually honored him as the first person with a four-limb physical challenge to compete in a Division I sport. I believe that Roger is inspirational. He brings uh, a clarity to all the individuals that he meets in regards to what you're capable of doing. After finishing his college tennis career with a 22-11 and 11 record, Roger eventually found his calling in life as a motivational speaker. As you look at my life experience, you can see the challenges that I face, but I may not be able to see yours. It was that experience on the tennis court that really changed how I saw myself. I learned that other areas of my life that I might have thought were impossible now would be possible. I didn't, of course, win every match, but when I walked out on the tennis court and I struck the first ball, I already won. That's how I felt. Heroes, presented by Tennis Express.